I think what you were trying to do with the Phil Mickelson thing was was produce vertical forces. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that doesn't seem to be that your dominant force pattern. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I'm in the studio of Dr. Scott K. Lynn. The secret studio here at Hermosa in Beach, California. Undisclosed location <laughs> in Davos. <laughs> or somewhere else a Bond villain would have a, sure. uh, would have a golf studio. Definitely. All right, so what we're talking about today is getting more speed using ground reaction force. I know that uh, recently uh, a video that was a lot of people watched and had a lot of questions about recently is I was doing this uh, these, this kind of personal testing, you know, as you do as a golfer, where I was swinging the Golf Stick Pro and I noticed that with my normal swing as fast as I could, you know, like if somebody was said, Brandon, I'll give you a thousand dollars for every mile an hour yeah, yeah. that you swing this stick. I mean, I was you, you can see in this video. This yeah. was effort. Go after 100 percent effort. And then uh, so then I think I got it to like 130 miles an hour. Then I tried Phil Mickelson's thing where I waited till here and then I launched off yep. is what he was saying that, yep. like, that he got from uh, TPI. Like a left foot kind of uh, jump and Yeah, uh, okay. for him lead foot, I yep. guess you would say. Yeah, so, lead foot, right. Yeah, so, uh, so, so I tried that and from 130 I went to like 123 or 125. I got wow, slower. slower, okay. So, so it made Phil faster, it made me slower. But I could, but it was interesting because when I had been doing it in the park, I was like, oh, this is faster. Yeah, yeah. Because I thought and it was faster. Measured it and it but wasn't. when I measured it, it was Interesting. Then, guy I know, kind of Scott Stallings, like I, I had done some stuff where Scott's back here and he's airborne basically yep. at impact. And uh, so I just wanted to, well, let me try the opposite of what Phil was doing. Right. Not really the opposite because it's still forced into the ground. But it's just with your other foot. It's just with the other foot. Right. So, so then on my right foot, I started being really light on this, and, but, but really kind of like pressuring this. Yeah this kind of right foot way, I went to 146. Wow. So it was Good. like uh, of swinging this club. Yeah. So what do you think that was? Why do you think maybe I, I went up there? So um, again, we've done a lot of this kind of dominant leg testing um, and um, I've, I've developed different ways to kind of test your dominant leg. And so what it sounds like to me, you're trying to produce those vertical forces, right? Those jumping. Yeah, I can see react. that there's something in connection with the ground that if used right, can boost my speed because sure. I've always seen in the channel, I've always seen doing flamingo drill, which has really helped my swing out a lot. Yep. I'm like 2% faster full swing than I am flamingo drill. Wow, that's like really I, I can swing flamingo drill like 109 miles an hour. Wow. I swing my regular swing like 111 or something. Wow, that's good. So, but yeah, but it's like, I know that if I was using my lower body, body pro properly, it wouldn't be 111, it'd be like 117. Sure, you know? yeah. So where do you think in this, your testing? You yeah, say, so yeah. Um, again, I think, you know, human beings are, are messy and there's different ways we can produce forces. We can produce side to side, we can produce twisting and we can produce vertical. And, and when you're doing the flamingo drill, you kind of have to produce all of them, right? Because you're trying to hit a golf shot. And yeah. it's impossible to hit a golf shot without using all three of those, at right. least to different little mm -hmm. magnitudes. Yeah. This takes away your ability to use some of them. You can't really use a whole lot of horizontal because you're going to fall over right. on your left foot. So mm -hmm. I think they're good drills in that way, but they're very golf specific. Yeah. Um, and so what we're trying to do is come up with tests to see how athletes use the ground, how you know somebody would just use the ground if they're trying to be an athlete and not just a golfer. And so we've developed, I've been working with a guy named Ben Shear in New Jersey to look at some uh, jumping tests. And so we do a bunch of different jumping tests. Um, the first one we're going to do to you is to determine kind of the length of your backswing or how long your golf swing should be. Okay. Yeah. Um, so if you think of like Phil Mickelson. Shorter right? than gonna, what I got, I'm sure. Well, yeah. so you, Phil Mickelson, you know, his club gets and like John Daly kind of, they get way beyond parallel. Oh, yeah. And they produce a big long swing. Uh -huh. And so I think that just means they need more time to create speed. Okay. And then you see like Tony Finau, right? He barely gets to here. It's crazy. And he creates tons of speed. Yeah, that's interesting. And so the first test we're going to do is to determine do you need to be more Tony Finau, which we call a resistor. Mm -hmm. So they kind of resist their lower body and snap into it or do you need to be a releaser to give you more time to create speed and then once we figure that out we're then going to test your individual legs and determine which one is stronger at creating mm. force in that condition okay ready yeah i'm ready let's, let's do, do it. it all right so we, we have the uh the computer set up here and uh we're, we're gonna i'm gonna try to key in to uh, Dr. Scott get it, get, will give us a capture of what's going on. Sure. We're using this really cool software that Swing Catalyst has that will actually sync up our launch monitor, video, and 
uh, the uh, swing catalyst. The ground force, yeah. So it's all in the same file here. All right, so let's test how long my back swing should be Good. based on okay, what Okay, so do. the first thing we're gonna do is take away any kind of arm action, because the arm action and the jump is, is a lot of skill. Yeah. And so we're just gonna put your hands on your hips to try to take away your arm action. Okay. So yep. the first jump we're gonna do is a, called a counter movement jump. So you're gonna stand. Ooh. Yeah. You're gonna bend down as far as you can and then jump up as fast as you can, like a normal vertical jump. Hold on, let me get my, Are you getting uh, uh, my loose and limber? <laughs> I want to break some records here. I like it. Watch I'm, out. All right, I got at least the ceiling's 15 feet above me. There. Okay, all right. <laughs> Raise the roof. There we go. Okay, ready. Go. Okay. All right, so, so what do you say? So this is my jump. Here's your counter movement jump. And so this doesn't look like a very efficient jumping pattern right here. That's um, the loading area there? Yeah. Well, so you see here, this is where you're bending down and unloading the ground. So the ground actually feels less force here. So you're only 40% of your body weight right there because you're actually accelerating downwards mm -hmm. towards the ground. And then as you turn that around, you start decelerating your downward motion here and then producing your upward motion and your maximum vertical force there is about 148% of your body weight. Oh, so that's when I'm most loaded into the ground. Yeah, that's the most vertical force you're producing. And you'll know, if you see a really good jumper, generally they have one distinct peak and then it drops off and they get in the air. You mm. have this one distinct peak and um, this is your, your nervous system saying, oh, that's not for you. Huh. And so then it drops off and then you have that final little push with your ankles here that produces this other little spike to try to get you up in the air, which is, yeah. it's not, not like all, all your much. lower body isn't yeah. kind of working together and there's okay. not much spike. So this double peak is like, it's kind of, your nervous system's kind of ramping up and it's like, no, no, that's not for you. And, oh, then, okay. uh, and then it kind of slows Oh, right, 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 right. So it should stay high to keep dropping. Well, it should just be like yeah. one spike and then whoosh, drop off. Okay, and gotcha. so yours is kind of like, no, okay. and then, uh, okay. And then we get up in the air. But, the, but if you go to my peak height, yeah. Oh, your peak height in the jump, like up. That's that's imp yeah, that's impressive. Come that's on. <laughs> that's like a human frog. <laughs> that's pretty good, uh, actually. Yeah, that is pretty good. Our, um, okay, so. But let's just see, because we're going to compare you to you, and yeah, so we're exactly. going to compare you so, now in another condition where we're going to take away okay. the this negative force, this bending down force. Oh. Okay. To see how you can produce force without stretching your muscles first. Let's try. Okay. That. Okay, so we just did, you call it the counterbalance jump, counter which is movement. basically like yeah. a, a normal counter movement. Yeah, down, down and, up. and up. So now still hands or on your just hips. Just here though. Yeah. So, so now gonna I'm going to go to all the way to my down spot. Is yeah, that reproduce that down spot. So you got pretty deep there and your trunk was pretty far forward. Okay, good. Okay. So you're just going to hang out there for a second. And mm -hmm. whenever you're ready, jump from there. Okay, good. So that was without going down any further. Hopefully we'll right. see if you cheated here. You can tell by the video. Interesting. That was a really interesting. Uh, so you actually look better in the first condition. All right. This is even worse than the first one. Yeah. Holy mackerel. I know. Such an inefficient jumper. All right. So I had some efficiency. I'd be putting my elbow in the rim. Oh, look out. Okay. All right. Okay. So this was. What is this test called? This is your. Uh, it's called the squat jumper. It's a non-counter movement jump. So we take away the counter movement because, and you actually did it very well because you see there's no negative force. Mm -hmm. So a negative force or a force below your body weight would mean that your body weight accelerated downwards before so like you went up. So like a little cheating. Yeah. yeah, right. And you didn't do that at all. So you did the test perfectly, which is great. Um, and you still see this double peak thing that you had before, mm -hmm. but your first spike here is 130, which is a lot less than it was in the previous jump. Yeah. And then your second spike is more than the previous one, but it's so still not up to the same as... So I'm jumping here like with my calves just as more than I'm jumping with my thighs. Yeah, huh? well that's the, uh, yeah, so you have this interesting pattern and it, it carries over in both jumping styles where you kind of start with the hip explosion here and then the, the, the ankles kind of take over at the end. So your well, ankles, wouldn't, wouldn't that be what a jump is? The, the ankles? Yeah, I, it but I no. generally don't see this double spike in yeah, good right. jumpers. You generally don't see that. So um, anyways, okay. um, that's what you got. But yeah. to me, you produce the most amount of force. So you're 140 something in the first jump and this one you don't quite get there. But they're both pretty close, but it seems like the first type of jump was better. And if you look, I don't know if we can quantify height because height, you did that little leg kick there. But uh, yeah, it, it looks just a little shorter. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's as high. So no. I would say the first type. And so that means that your yeah. nervous system actually still works pretty well. So you don't have to be super long um, to create speed. Okay. So um, 
I wouldn't try to really lengthen out your golf swing to create more speed. I, I think you're going to be okay with the counter movement style. Great. So that's good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to test each leg in the counter movement style to see which one produces force better. Okay. Now we're really going to challenge you. You are going to hands on the hips. Uh huh. Stand on one foot, down mm -hmm. and up. Okay. Left first. Whatever you want to do right, first. Left that's first. good. <clears throat> I got nowhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And now to the right, you ready yep. to? Sorry. Right side. Hands on hips, right? Yep. All right, so what we have here is your right footed jump on the left. Uh, I should have done the opposite, shouldn't I? <laughs> we can see what it is, that's right. <laughs> and your left footed jump on the right. Anyways, um, and what we find out is you are a messy mm -hmm. yeah. individual. <laughs> yeah. Um, because you'll see here, your pattern looks the same on the right foot as it does on two feet. You, ha you have that one little blip and then it comes down and you have that second little blip. Yeah. And you get up, actually, which is very interesting, you get more force. So you're 154 here kind of at your peak on your right foot than you did on both feet. Yeah, both feet is 140 40 or something. something yeah. which is very interesting. Um, and then if we go over here, um, you're like, you, you have a much different pattern jumping off your left. You have one spike. This looks more like what a uh, you know more elite jumper would kind of look like, except for this rate. You see how, how not very steep that hill is? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You'd see really good jumpers that would be much steeper because oh, they yeah. can produce force at a much higher rate. But, a little quicker. But you do get 210% of your body weight, which is a lot of force. Yeah. Um, I saw a 211 there somewhere, Scott. Did it go up that <laughs> yeah, way? Yeah, there, there it goes, go. 211. That's a lot of force uh, on your yeah, left I'm side. Yeah. And so. Probably what you were doing with your, um, and this is something we need to test out, is it looks like your left leg is your dominant leg in terms of producing those vertical forces. Definitely when I jump. That, yeah. That's the one that and so it doesn't seem like when you did your drill that the vertical forces were the ones you were altering. You know, maybe st staying back on your right side a little more produced a little more horizontal force for you. Um, and that's something yeah. that you know, we couldn't measure with this plate. I've always kind of slid too, so we yeah. just kept Perfect. from sliding. Okay. And so it doesn't look like, so to me, you're a left-legged resistor mm -hmm. is what uh, Ben Shear would, would uh, call you. Um, but then we'd have to figure out, you know, what kind of a posting you are, are you, because there's so many different ways, because this is only um, measuring your ability to produce vertical forces on each right. leg. And obviously right. there's other forces, right? There's the side-to-side -side forces, there's the torque forces. Mm -hmm. Okay, Scott, so I just did my jumping. Yeah, and we what? figured out that it, it looks like you are a, a left-legged dominant vertical force producer. Yeah, and again, I can get like real athletic off this off your left, even more, way more than okay. both. Good, and when you do, just a question for you, when you do your flamingo drill that you said you've done quite a bit, do you ever do it off your right leg or always off your left? Never off my right leg. Oh, interesting. So this is a, you know, for this test to be very, you know, valid, um, you know, this, it, it would need to be like a novel skill, right? All these three, right, but you've right. practiced one so much that- I've, I've that, done this one That who lot. knows? Um, yeah. So, but maybe making your base a little narrower could, could help us learn something, but let's see. Okay. Um, so the first thing you wanna do is put your feet about one ball width apart, so super okay. close together. Okay. And you're gonna hit the best full speed shot you can from there. Okay. All right. 159. Carry 88.7. Okay, 88.7 miles per hour club head speed. Okay. And what was your smash there? Yeah. Right, because we have 129. the actual. 129. Okay. We have the actual dots on here, so we can tell. That's how. Oh, you can see where on the face it hit. Yeah. Yeah. But it measures club and ball speed. Okay. Great. Now feet together again, about the same width or apart now. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. And let's drop your right foot straight back. Good. So okay. move it. A little close, like closer into the other. One. Yeah, there you go. All oh, right. So it's so the same. Not yeah, cheating same yeah. width. Okay, and tap your right toe so there's no pressure on it, and then hit it from there. Oh, I fatted it. Whew. Oh, there. Eighty-five. So that was slower, actually. Okay. And I think so. When we control for the width of your stance, maybe it now makes it a little more of a. Yeah, maybe. Of a. Uh, um, novel task. So right. same thing now, feet together, a little bit, you know, one foot, mm -hmm. okay, and now drop your left foot back. And tap your toe, make sure it's the same width, yeah, and now rip it from there. Eighty-one, so that was slower. So you're, you were fastest in the middle. 
okay. of yeah. the two of them. And so yeah. this is where um, we talk about, so generally, if you're fastest on your front foot, you're really going to need those vertical forces to create speed. Right. Because you, that's really you know, where the, all the force is coming from. Uh, if you're fastest on your trail foot, you're going to need more horizontal force. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're fastest um, in the middle, you're going to need more twisting force. You've got to stay right. centered. To well, I don't to... have much. We saw when we used the, uh, the 3D plate, yeah. I don't have that much. And so I plate. think that's where yeah. your, your speed would need to come from. It's so from... like if we were mi uh, mining for gold, that might be the richest place to go. I think that is explore. based on all yeah. the tests. And, so, and we also found out that your left leg seems to be your kind of dominant leg. So we'd probably want to give you more kind of left leg yeah. cues. Um, but um, I think what you were trying to do with the Phil Mickelson thing was was produce vertical forces. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that doesn't seem to be mm -hmm. that your dominant force pattern. Right. We want to produce more rotational forces. So, so maybe... one thing that we've tried, I don't know if we did this the last time, but let me see. Uh, take it to the top and stop. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to resist you. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to try to twist you into backswing rotation. You've got to try to push through me. So go into downswing. Push, 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 push. Oh, boy. There you go. Come on. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh Good. boy, yeah. So what I just did with you there is something called reactive neuromuscular training. Yeah. And so I'm trying to twist you into backswing. I'm mm -hmm. trying to re resist you, and you have to try to push through to create. Um, and so the thing to, to push your hip back, and you notice when I released you, pew, you went oh, wide yeah. open. Yeah, yeah. And so that's, that's kind of the feeling I'd want you to try to create to see what happens. So try it one more time. We're going to try to train yeah. your brain, take it yeah. to the top. Okay, and go. Turn, 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 turn. Good. And oh, this wow. literally is, I'm, I'm a human swing cat back here. Because um, I don't know if you were still there when, when you left the other night. Uh -huh. A guy got on the plate, um, one of the members there, I think it was, and his torque was off the charts. Uh -huh. And I got in behind him and tried to hold him, and I couldn't hold him. Like, he exploded oh, me. Oh, okay. Yeah, Where yeah. I can hold you yeah, yeah, for sure. pretty well. Um, and so, have that feel. And... Hit a couple and let's see what happens. Okay. Don't even think about it. Just, just that yeah. feel, what, whatever that feel oh, okay. was that you just felt pushing into my hands. I felt like the club was fast. I just thinned it. Right. The club wasn't crazy fast. Though. 94? Yeah, that's fast for a seven iron. Yeah. yeah. So what, you were like 91 before? 91, yeah. Okay, I think we might be on to something. Yeah. So yeah, if I feel that, I'm going to be kind of here and then really. Yeah. It's really, it's not so much the resisting that gives me like the light bulb, it's when you let go. And you, yeah, yeah. okay, good, yeah. I like it. Really good. Shorten my backswing just a little bit. There you right? go, that's what we learned from your that's jumping test, right? That's what we learned right? from was the to, jumping test. I don't need a, you a don't lot need of to time go long. No, to, be, to create speed. I'm going to take a little more solidly. 122 ball speed, 170 carry for 7 iron, 95. Yeah, 95 on the club. So, I mean, those okay. are all consistently yeah. faster. Two, yeah. three, four miles an hour faster than, um, than when you got here. And so, all of that testing we did was just to find out what the messiness of your body, what works best. Um, and again, this is, this is testing that you couldn't do without the technology, right? So right. We, we tested with the launch monitor to see which leg in a golf specific context. We tested with the force plate to see mm -hmm. should you be shorter, should you be longer, then which leg is the best mm -hmm. leg. Yeah. Um, and all those things told me you need to be a twisting golfer with kind of a left leg feel and a little shorter. Yeah. And, and all of those things, when it adds up to that, um, you know, when you're three, four miles an hour faster. It's usable. Then, oh, on a seven iron, so then that should you're, be that's that a whole club difference. Button, yeah. yeah. Um, Driver should be even more. Yeah. And so um, to me, this is the thing that we see most of the time. Um, most of the time, I would say like, you know, a good percentage of the time, yeah. a, a really high percentage of the time. Um, and, and you're messier than most people oh, yeah. um, because you do so much work on your swing, right? You and you're see, always... You see more th that people can use no, more. No, no, no. No. I mean, I, just when we test their body and we get them to do things that match more what they tested out to be, okay. this tells me better things. Oh, right, right, um, right. And, and a lot of times we can get even higher changes or more gains in club head speed when people are a little less close to what, you know, what their bodies need to do, which a lot of people are. Um, 
but with you and with you again, you you you've done so much. I mean, you've had a lesson from so many different people. Yeah. Right? How many golf yeah. lessons have you had in your life? In my life, a lot. In the last, but I can say in the last two years, I've had. Fifty. Yeah. You know, like, and you so know, from the, from like eighteen different yeah. features. So. so all that messiness, you know, adds to your your motion patterns yeah. and can make things difficult to break mm -hmm. through. But um, to me, what we tested you to be is you're kind of a left leg dominant jumper, but you're more of a centered pivoter. Twister, so yeah, yeah, you want to produce more rotational force or torque force, but using your left leg to do it. And so that. Oh yeah, let me try that one more time because that was something that I kind of saw when you were talking about. Um, Matt Wolf swing, yeah. where he got the mat moving like that, that way, way yeah. and, and then back. Yeah. So let me not try to twist my hips open by twisting my hips, yeah. but try to twist the hips open by moving this mat. Sure. Or I, oh, well, like just try to basically in transition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is going to be tough, I think, but because um, it's not really in transition. It's a little later where it has to happen. Uh, your left leg. I mean, you could try to do a little Matt Wolf type swing. So try to swing it and like jump that left foot back towards that. Well, the left, oh right, because, okay, this is getting confusing for me. Because if I jump the left foot back this way, I you have to put force in the ground that way me. to yeah. do it. Yeah. So really all I have to think about is just jump back. Yeah. So take all some right. swings like that and try to go full speed. Kind of like a Bubba thing a sure. little bit. You didn't. Uh, no, I jump. didn't actually get airborne. I no. was trying to bend it like crazy. That was 95. That went even faster. That was faster. faster. <laughs> yeah. right, that's you didn't hit it very well, but. No, but. But that tells me that we're on to something. Let me really try to get airborne. That was fast. 122. 90. 97.4. Yeah, on that. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> so the testing. Let's see. All right. So now I'm really, because both those, like, nobody watching would know that I was trying to jump no, that way. No. But, it, but I bet you that the mat would know. The mat would know. So yeah. if we had the 3D plate in here, I'll bet you your torque's going up as you're yeah. doing this. That one actually jumped a little bit. And that was a really interesting statement you just made. 98. Yeah, that one. Yeah. The statement you made that no one would know what you were trying to do just from watching the video just from yeah, watching the right. video because i always tell people you can't see kinetics with your eye mm -hmm. so ground reaction force there's two things in in biomechanics talk about kinematics which are motions kinetics which are the forces that cause the motions and you can see kinematics with your eye you can see kinematics yeah. with your iphone you can see kinematics with your video camera you can't see kinetics so that's why we need a plate like this to measure right, it right. and so all that testing we did with this plate tells us that that's what you need to do. And it's interesting because when I hear jumping and ground reaction force, I always think down and up. Doesn't have but, to be. But this is more like the sheer of the sheer. Basically, like the jump this way yeah. to make me yeah. just uh, 98 miles an hour, that one. So that feel for you of pushing your, wow, 126 ball speed, 174 carry, 97.7. Yeah, that's like, I can, I can, I can, I mean, I can do that every time, but. Just putting it on the ball. I guess that, that's a little extreme. So let me just get a, <laughs> a golf course shot. Wow. Okay. That's good. I'll have to try that. that, was that was, yeah. Well, I tried to you swing a little it? more like it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it. now the now the normal golf course swinging feel one is still three miles an hour faster than. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Than it was. Let me actually try. This. Okay. I hit it good there. That, that looks good. Out. 125 ball speed, 174 carry, 95. Yeah, cool. All right, guys, you can check out stuff about Swing Catalyst on their website, which is... Swingcatalyst.com, um, and you can get in touch with me at slin at swingcatalyst.com. If you guys are interested in trying a lesson with this or doing some of these testings or things like that, Scott can connect you with someone, hopefully, in your area. Definitely. Thanks for watching, everybody. Click the subscribe button. See you later.